On March the 20th this year, a partial solar eclipse will be visible across the whole of the UK, Ireland and also mainland Europe. This short video from the Society for Popular Astronomy will tell you how to view the eclipse safely and also what's going to happen. The eclipse happens due to a rare lineup of the Sun, Moon and Earth in space. From the ground, the Moon will gradually pass in front of the Sun, blocking out its light. From some parts of the Earth, the event will actually be a total eclipse, but that can only be seen from land in two places, the Faroe Islands in the North Atlantic and Svalbard in the Arctic. Otherwise, the track of the Moon's dark central shadow entirely crosses the sea. That means that most of us are not going to see the special phenomena that are connected with a total solar eclipse, such as the appearance of the Sun's ghostly atmosphere, the corona, or any fiery prominences. So we'll have to make do with the partial solar eclipse, where the Moon doesn't manage to cover all of the Sun. But this still promises to be an impressive spectacle, because it will be the biggest blotting out of the Sun visible from the UK since the eclipses of 1999 and 2003. But still, a partial solar eclipse where the Moon doesn't manage to fully cover the Sun is still an impressive spectacle. So let's talk about what's going to happen and what you can expect to see. First of all though, never look directly at the Sun. Even though the disk will be mostly covered, the Sun is still too bright to be looked at safely and you could do very serious damage to your eyes. Sunglasses won't do and neither will something like a piece of bin liner or a piece of smoked glass. The simplest and the safest way to view the eclipse is with some eclipse viewers and you can buy them from specialist providers. Now they come in two different types. One type that you simply hold up in front of your eyes and turn to face the sun. And then another type which looks more like a pair of sunglasses and you can put those on safely in place and then turn and view the eclipse. But what can you do if you don't have these viewers? Well, the simplest is to use something called a pinhole viewer. Just a very tiny hole will project an image of the sun onto a piece of card that's held some distance away, perhaps around a metre. Even a pinhole in the side of a cereal packet will do the trick, but the image of the sun will be quite small. But even though, you'll see that the crescent shape of the sun is shown quite well. But remember, never look through the pinhole, look at the image that's cast through it. You can also have a bit of fun in trying to view the solar eclipse. You can use something like this. Now this is a steamer that's got holes in the bottom. You might have a colander in your kitchen that looks exactly the same. And this can be used to create a projected image of the sun. Stand with your back to the sun and let the sunlight pass through the colander and on the ground you'll notice beautiful images of the crescent sun. Now a third and simple way to look at the eclipse is using something that I have in my pocket. It's a small mirror. What you'll need to do is cover the mirror with paper into which you've cut a small hole. Put the mirror in sunlight and reflect the spot of light from the mirror into a darkened room and you'll get a nice image of the sun. You should be able to see all stages of the eclipse very clearly. If the projection distance is about five meters, that will give you an image of the sun that's about five centimeters across. And the hole in the paper doesn't have to be circular. Here, we've used a triangular hole about five millimeters across. If you don't have specialist filters, you can use your binoculars or telescope to project an image of the sun. The idea is simple. Just point your instrument at the sun and hold a piece of white card as a screen about 30 centimetres or so behind it. Now, never look directly through the instrument, so use its shadow to judge when you are lined up with the sun. When you get your image of the sun on the card, it may well be out of focus to start with. So focus it up and you can get a sharp edged image of the sun on your screen. With your telescope, use your lowest magnification eyepiece, which is the one with the largest number on it, such as 25 millimeters. To get a larger image of the eclipsed sun, hold the card further away and refocus. But watch out because the sun's heat could be focused inside the binocular or telescope and start to melt the eyepiece. Many eyepieces use plastic interior parts, so don't let the image of the sun drift out of the field of view or you could start to damage your eyepiece. 
If you do want to use a specialist solar filter and you don't have one already, specialist telescope suppliers sell these in different fittings for a range of telescopes. Or you can make your own, but only using the correct filter material, Bada Astro Solar, which you can get in A4 sheets for about £20. But make absolutely sure that the filter is a snug fit and completely covers the lens with no bits of sunlight getting through. And also make sure that your filter can't be dislodged. Don't put too much faith in sticky tape and always use the material in front of the lens and not at the eyepiece end. You can also use this filter to cover telephoto lenses if you want to photograph the eclipse. Let's go on now to discuss exactly what you're going to see during the solar eclipse. Well that depends on how far you are from the track of totality that passes across the northern Atlantic. If you live in the north of Scotland, much more of the sun will be obscured by the moon than for those living in the south of England. But everywhere in the UK will see the sun covered by at least 85% at mid-eclipse. The timings vary slightly depending on where you are, but from the centre of the UK, the eclipse begins at around 8.30 in the morning, when you'll start to see a tiny bite taken out of the right-hand edge of the sun's disk. As you watch, this moves very slowly across the face of the sun. What's happening is that the moon is now right in front of the sun. The eclipse reaches its maximum by around 9.30 and by this time the sun appears as a thin crescent in the sky. But remember, the bright bit is just as bright as usual, so never look at it directly. Then the moon starts to move off the sun from right to left and by around 10.40 it's all over and the sun is a circular disk again. We won't see the moon passing in front of the sun again until the 21st of August 2017 and we won't see an eclipse as good as this one until August 2026, so don't miss it. If you want to know more about this eclipse and how to observe it, and also find out about other eclipses, go to the SPA website where you can download a PDF leaflet which we prepared in conjunction with the Royal Astronomical Society. So let's keep our fingers crossed for a clear skies on March the 20th so that we get a great view of the eclipse of the decade.